In my last tutorial, I showed you the very basics of CMake, which is how to take multiple source files and to compile or build them into one program, which is all well and good. You need to know how to do that. But if you're going to build any sizable program, you're almost certainly going to need third party libraries. Uh, you don't want to write all that code all by yourself. So how do you do that? Well, if you have a look at other people's CMake lists or the CMake documentation, you'll probably find a function called find package. And on the surface, it looks like that's what you need to use. And indeed, you can use find package to find the libraries and to link them in. However, even though find package is fully documented on the website, it still feels kind of like this magic dark black box. So somehow it finds packages in usually in common locations on the hard drive. And then if it can't find a package, it stops it's out an error and as a rookie developer you'll probably feel this overwhelm feeling as you're wondering what now so there is a there is a more direct method a method that allows you to point directly to the source code of the library that you want to uh, want to link to it's called fetch content so let's have a look at that now for this example, I'm going to link to a library called Raylib, which is great for beginners. You can write a few lines of code and have a window open and draw stuff to it. And that's something that could take a lot more work if you didn't use a library like Raylib. Anyway, let's go to the CMake list file for this project. And you'll see here is the guts of the fetch content to fetch Raylib. So to start off with, you have to include the fetch content module into CMake. Let, let CMake know we want to use fetch content. And then you've got this fetch content declare, where we declare what the package is that we, are, we want to fetch, which we, is, is Raylib. We tell it where to find Raylib if it's not on the machine already, if it's not on this computer already. This is where to find it. Now, this is a a URL that you'll want to pay attention to because this is the way that you can fetch packages off GitHub. Basically, you've got the, the URL for the, the project or the library that you want to build, and you've got this extra bit, and then most projects are tagged, their, their official versions are tagged by version number. You'll see, you'll see up here, I've set a variable called Raylib version. I want version 4.5.0. So you can tell I specifically want Raylib version 4.5.0. Now that's a very good practice in software development because if you, if you just allow any old version, then what can happen is you have version 4.5 on your machine, but your colleague might have version 4.2. And then depending on who builds the software, it may or may not work correctly. So if everybody's using the same version of all the libraries, uh, you're guaranteed to have the same behavior. This next line here, um, so you'll, you'll see this is like a hint that fetch content will actually use fetch find package internally. So this is where we let find package know we want version 4.5.0 of Raylib, not a different one. So the way this works is when we call fetch content make available with Raylib, first find package will go check do we already have Raylib version 4.5.0 on this machine. If yes, great. If not, it will go and download it from this URL and then build it. If you look down in my, my output window down the bottom here, you will see building Raylib static library. And in this case, I've already downloaded it. It's already on my machine, so I don't need to do any more. But yes, it's building it right here. Now you will also notice this line in here set build examples off. Build examples is a Raylib ver a CMake variable. We don't want the examples. We don't want to waste time or space building the examples. We just want the library. So here I've set build examples to off. Uh, I don't want to go into Y cache internal and then an empty string. You can actually put whatever you like in the string. This is the way you need to do it to set build examples for Raylib. Now, uh, a quick note to anybody writing libraries, please, when you create these, um, these variables to enable or disable different parts of your project, it's a good idea to prefix them with your project name. So in this case, it would be raylib underscore build examples so that 
when somebody disables examples in their CMake project, they don't accidentally, if everybody uses build examples, then disabling it for Raylib here will disable it for all other uh, libraries linked to below or, or fetched below. And we may not want that. By, by setting a unique um, build example, so Raylib build examples like this, it just means you don't get those collisions and it it's just makes life a little bit easier for people using your library. Uh, no big deal though. If I was using another project below and I did want to build the examples, I just have to put another one of these in after the, the this fetch content make available. And that is almost everything that there is to it. The final thing, and this is regardless of whether you use fetch content or find package directly or some other way, if you need to link to a library, you need to add the link library to your target. So in this case, target link libraries, we are linking Raylib into our project and project name. If you look up here, project name is hello window. So if you've done all of this correctly, then when you go to build and run it, everything should work just fine. So let's see, it's doing final build. Yeah, there we go. Our little hello world program. It's opened a window. Hello world, it's great to be here. Uh, which is only possible because I linked to Raylib. So that is in a nutshell how you link to third party libraries provided the source code is available. That's it for now. I will see you next time.